gotta film this video an entire second time because I couldn't see in the screen over there that the camera wasn't in complete focus. So, fuck me for wanting to go to bed early tonight. <laughs> the first movie I saw, well, the first movie I'm gonna talk about is The Babysitter, which is a new Netflix film directed by McGee. And uh, he has proven himself to be not a good director, but a decently competent one, due to the fact that even though his movies are mostly bad, like Terminator Salvation or Three Days to Kill, at least he knows where to put the fucking camera. But with The Babysitter, I am now under the impression that he is one of the worst directors ever to live. <laughs> this movie is a complete disaster in every sense of the word. The acting is terrible, the directing is awful, the cinematography is nauseating, uh, the, 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 the writing... Oh God! Um, there's just so many plot conveniences, so many cliches, everything wrong with horror movies, and it's not even an enjoyable, self-aware kind of way. It's like completely unaware of how stupid it is. And to top it all off, Bella Thorne is in it. And uh, she cannot act to save her life. I'm sorry. She seems like a nice girl, but Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, she was in another Netflix movie that came out back over the summer called You Get Me, which was absolutely terrible, but somehow this managed to be worse. Um, if you can't tell from my angry tone. I mean, most of that is coming from the fact that I have to film this video a second time. But just don't see it. It's garbage. Uh, the next, <laughs> this isn't even the only Bella Thorne movie I've seen this weekend. Uh, the next movie I saw, or I'm going to talk about, is Amityville The Awakening. And for those of you who do not know what the point of an Amityville horror sequel is in 2017, let me tell you about the production history. This movie was originally pitched in 2011, that w and it was going to go to two completely different screenwriters. And they were going to make it a modern found footage movie about the Amityville Mansion, and it was going to utilize like modern social media and all that stuff, and that was eventually scrapped, thank God, uh, and then they gave it to a new director and new writer, and now we have Amityville The Awakening. Bella Thorne is the lead role, and she plays this girl who moves into this Amityville house with her family, and she has a brother who had an accident, and because of that he's permanently crippled and in sort of a coma and because he's in that coma he's slowly deteriorating and it's supposed to be like this slow descent into madness but it's so badly acted and written that it completely falls flat on its face and the jump scares are just they're not even like so loud that it's annoying it's just lazy and it makes it kind of funny to watch <laughs> But um, uh, once this movie was actually shot and made, it was supposed to come out in January of 2012. But then it got pushed to January of 2014, and then January of 2015, then January of 2016, and then January of 2017, then April of 2017, and now finally, on October 28th, 2017, it's on VOD. It didn't even get a full wide theatrical release. It has, it's in a couple theaters right now but that's not gonna last very long. What else to say? This movie's really bad. Um, it's not a complete train wreck. The cinematography isn't horrible, but it's pretty underwhelming, which is so disappointing because, it, I mean, I'm, of course an Amityville horror sequel is gonna be terrible, but this is the director of uh, the remake of Maniac that came out back in 2013, and I think that's a pretty solid horror movie that's really effective and unique. But that one had Alexandra Aja writing it and Elijah Wood in the lead role. So, I guess it's who you're surrounded by. Uh, don't watch this. It's just a boring, shitty horror movie. Uh, the next movie I'm going to talk about is Novitiate, which is the story of a convent of nuns who are kind of being taught what it means to be nuns by this really strict woman played by Melissa Leo. And this is all happening in the midst of the Vatican II stuff. And what the Vatican II stuff is, is from 1962 to 1965, uh, there were all these reforms and changes made to the Catholic Church, so you now have to be more accepting of other religions. Uh, nuns don't have the, the same sort of power or position they had that they used to have. And uh, the thing about this movie that's really, like, there are a lot of positive things. It's directed okay. Maggie Betts, I think it's her second 
feature film that she's made, maybe her first, I don't know. Uh, but she did an okay job. A lot of the acting is good, um, especially from Julianne Nicholson, who plays the main character's mother, and she gives a really heartfelt and emotional performance that was really effective. But the problem is with this movie, they kind of titanicked it. And what I mean by that is they have a real life story happening, like real life events happening in the background, but the main story and focus is with fictional characters. And it really cheapens the effect of the movie. And also the, 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 com the message that this movie is having is really confused. It's like, you don't know whether or not it wants you to think that what is happening and being taught in the church during this time is beautiful and you're supposed to be like in awe of this, these women's pure devotion to God and the church or you're supposed to be horrified by the the, tr the mistreatment and the the sexual repression and it's like at the end there's this title card that says 90,000 nuns left the Catholic Church after the Vatican II stuff happened and it's like it's like how in the imitation game, at the end of the movie, they just say Alan Turing committed suicide. And you're supposed to believe that like all the events that happened in the movie are what led up to that event, even though Alan Turing was experimenting with cyanide and he took a bite of a poison apple. So, I mean, you could theorize that that stuff happened. It's not a, it's not a bad theory at all, but saying that as the definite truth is kind of harmful. Um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, if you're really interested in the Vatican II stuff, just go look it up for yourself. Uh, this is really an unspecial movie, and it's pretty disappointing. And I would skip it. Uh, the next movie I'm going to talk about is Suburbicon, which was directed by George Clooney. stars Matt Damon, Julianne Moore, Oscar Isaac. And it's also really underwhelming. <laughs> God, none of the movies I saw this weekend were good. Suburbicon is quite the anomaly in that it has so much potential to be really clever and witty and good. It's, it's a script that was originally written by the Coen brothers. And then it was reworked by George Clooney and Grant Hesloff, but I'll get into that. Basically what the story is, is there's the A plot and the B plot. The A plot is Matt Damon is the patriarchy of this household. He's got a wife and a kid, and the wife's twin sister lives with them. And these men break into their house, they kill the wife, and then it's Matt Damon, Julianne Moore, who's the twin sister of the wife, and this kid uh, who are kind of left behind. But what's really happening is Matt Damon and Julianne Moore plotted for those men to kill the wife so that they could get the insurance money. And the B plot <laughs> is uh, a real life story of this black family, the. Shit, I forgot the name. Their names in the movie are the Myers family, but I don't know if that's their real name or not. It's about a black family who moved into an all-white neighborhood and how they were really badly treated. And the thing is, it's like, you have this wacky crime farcical comedy happening, and then you have this really dead serious story about racism and prejudice happening at the same time. And it's like oil and water. The two just don't mesh. You can tell why the Coen brothers didn't direct this. It's basically Fargo mixed with A Raisin in the Sun. Although it's not good as good as either of those. And it's very wasted potential. And also, it's pretty problematic, and here's why. When you have this real life, dead serious story of this family that was tortured by the people that are supposed to be their neighbors, and then you have this stupid made-up story about Matt Damon riding his bicycle away from loan sharks and, and gangsters. It's like, you're almost discrediting the real story and turning it into a farce. And it's pretty fucked up. So, all politics aside, this movie was pretty lame. It was pretty uneven. And if you're really interested in seeing it, I guess, go watch it. In terms of George Clooney's filmography, I put it somewhere in the middle. His movies that he's directed range from being decently good to horribly boring, and this kind of sits in the middle. So, I don't even, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. And then the final movie I'm talking about is Jigsaw. <laughs> this was somehow the movie I enjoyed the most this weekend, and um, 
It tells you about the state of cinema right now. All jokes aside, Jigsaw is the eighth film in the Saw franchise. As far as my thoughts on that franchise go, I think the first Saw film is a really solid and unique horror movie. Uh, the second through the fifth one are really boring and stupid, and it, it, there's not even a shred of self-awareness in them. And it's kind of a chore to get through all of them. Six and seven are just a tad better in the sense that they kind of understand how stupid they are, and they revel in the stupidity. Although the police procedural stuff is still really boring and dumb, the, the traps are more fun, and it, it's much more lighthearted. And now we have Jigsaw, which is directed by the Spirit Brothers, who have done... Predestination and Daybreakers, which are two pretty underrated movies that uh, you guys should watch because they're really unique and interesting. As far as Jigsaw, this is probably the best directed a Saw sequel has ever been and the best acted a Saw sequel has ever been. I mean, not all the acting is good. The, the, the lead detective and the lead forensic scientist are pretty horrible, but all the people that are going through the Jigsaw traps are actually decent. The characters aren't very well written, but they're well written enough to the point where it's not like, oh my god, I can't stand these people. Like in something like Saw 2, where you just hate everybody. Um, and then Tobin Bell is back as Jigsaw, even though Jigsaw died in movie 3, and the continuity in this franchise is such a disaster. And that gets me into the twist of this movie, which I'm not going to spoil because it's like... All I'm going to say is that it's a very similar twist to Saw 4, I believe? Saw 4? Or Saw 2. One of those two. And it's like, the series' continuity is already so fucked up as it is, it just takes it and completely shakes it up even more than you thought it could, and it's hilarious, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> this is not a good movie at all, but I, I definitely had a great time, and I really hope they make another one, because... I will be first in line to see it. Those are the movies I saw this weekend. Um, oh god, I have an essay I have to do right now. Oh shit. I got suspended. Ooh, you got suspended for chief and a hundred blunts. Fourteen, four hundred minutes. Fans all in the stands. They hands for Mr. Bennett. That racket over the net.